Hi everyone, Janet Boyer here, and today I'm going to talk about facing the blank page. Um, I'm starting to take on clients with my creativity coaching business, and it's amazing that the thing that keeps showing up is fear of starting or saying you don't have time or energy to start, but when you start delving into it, you realize, um, yeah, actually you do have time, whether it's waiting for your coffee to brew, making yourself a cup of tea, um, 10 minutes in the counter, you know, of your kitchen or at the dining room table. And so this video is for writers, junk journalers, um, anybody who painters, artists who has trouble facing the blank page. And I just want to show you just how many tools there are out there. These are just ones that I own or have made. <laughs> and what I mean by made is um, one time I was feeling stuck about things with, to make with junk journaling or um, what to draw or paint. And my husband and son actually made me a little deck of sorts. Things like Statue of Liberty, herbal tea, sweet wildlife orange robot party <laughs> pepsi flavored cupcakes oh my god that sounds good my son must have done that one chocolate mousse yogurt snowflakes art adam and eve and satan too <laughs> had to be my husband space unicorn mr rogers dolphins. And so, you know, if you have any friends in your house or even your yourself, you know, just open up to a dictionary or a book and pick out words and cut them up and make them into a little deck. And boom, you have ideas for drawings, paintings, short stories, you know, who knows, poems. There's even more I was going to bring down, and I didn't even bring down things that, that I got at Barnes & Noble where it'll start out with, like, an introduction to a story, first line, then you write it. Um, I have one for poems. I have one um, that has, like, five items at the top, and my family and I have done that for years where, you know, give three random items and we all write a story or what have you. I actually even made a deck, and it's available in our shayboyer.etsy dot com um etsy shop for junk journalers and or any kind of art journaling and i actually have um 80 subjects but i made this for myself first before i actually graphic designed it and then put it for sale and for printing there's 80 subjects i put 16 styles and eras 32 materials 32 colors or patterns so if you want to take a look at that you can they're printable buck 99 um, I have for regular junk journaling and then I have a Christmas edition. So if you guys want to do Christmas creating, so there's so much that you could do. So see like for the typography or script, like I have things like pictographs or hieroglyphs, art deco, Zentangle, psychedelic seventies, art nouveau, surrealism. And then I have things like jungle and, and other you know, subjects and topics. So see, you can even make your own or you can, you know, get um, cheap printables on Etsy like for mine, or you can actually buy things that are made for you. There are decks, there are cards, there are even sticks. <laughs> this was from, a, oh, this is probably sold out. That was from a Writer's Digest. I think it was called Writer's Toolkit by somebody named Jamie Cat Callan, I believe. It came in a box it had a book with it too. I don't know where that's at, but it's the coolest thing. I mean, like protagonists, Leora, who loves to visit Israel, Frank, the painter, Bill, the paleoclimatologist, Margaret, who loves Psy, and so uh, Iris, the psychoanalyst. So see, so many um, different things to spur your imagination. Then there was an action wheel, does research at the library and you just spin them randomly, you know, loses weight, takes up cooking, you know, and you don't have to use any of them. Obstacles, same thing. The lady at stop and shop, the woman in 3B, Fred the monster, 
<laughs> goals, you know, to be wild and free, to be the great seducer, to be young again, to see the world. And these are just the wills. I mean, this kit also came with like these different sticks that had things on them. That weekend in Duluth. Dad gave me a wink, like we were pals or something. Now, I think these were color coded. I can't remember. Like I said, I can't remember um, where the book is. I, these might actually match with the actions. I don't know. But the point is, is they're, they're mix and match. Like there's something called in here called Six Sense Cards. Your Mother's Pearls. An old Daniel Steele novel. The Smell of Peach Pie. Blue Index Cards. And there was even a timer. So, I mean, that's just one. That's Writer's Digest. I think it was Writer's Toolkit. But again, you can also use that for painting or junk journaling or doodling or whatever. One of the first things I've got, some of these are probably 20 years old. <laughs> like this one. This is, I think, probably the first one I ever got because I heard so much about it. Creative Whack Pack is one of the first and only um, out there back then. And it says, you know, ABC's 2020. What a technique. I found it worthless. To be honest, I've never used it. Anytime I've ever drew a card, it just has not been helpful. Like, for example, oh, well, this is the back. <laughs> of course it's not helpful. Be persistent. And it gives, you know, a little story. And then add, you know, ask a question, how persistent are you? Well, to me, that's not creativity. This is kind of for personal journaling. In what ways are you creative? So I think this would actually be a good personal journey, journaling deck. And of course, any of those could be used that I showed you. And any of these could be used for journaling. What you would do is just, um, if you want to write things in a journal and you're stumped, draw a card or draw a stick or make yourself, you know, little tiles or words and then write about it. I mean, it's that simple. I mean, you could cut out magazine words, what have you. Now, my absolute favorite tool in terms of writing is something called the Narada Storytelling Cards. This is by a son and father um, team, and it came out a few years ago, and you can use it for comics, screenplays, illustration, novels, advertisements, comedy, anything. And it is a powerful brainstorming tool, as they say. There's 200 cards in here. Now, I've separated them into sections, so there's like... Um, there's activity, there's society, situation, meta, creature, character, object. And I have written stories with these event, location, and goal. I have one of them up on readsy.com. Um, and that's another thing. Readsy every week has five storytelling prompts. And they're free to use, free to submit your stories. But if you want, you can even submit a story and win $250 if you win. And my last story, Pop, 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 I used, I created using these. So let's say you only want to use three, like a location. Like there's a secret chamber and it has different words associated with secret chamber. A creature, it might be a demon, but it tells you all the words that might be associated with that. So it's more, more than just a demon. If you hear sneezing in the back, excuse my husband, <laughs> there must be rag weed or something in the air because we were both sneezing. Um, event. Stop the presses. Object. A crown. And, it, you know, you see how many for each of these. I mean, box, wheelchair, corpse. It's really well thought out. Character. Aristocrat. Meta. Those are things like symbol. Desire. Things are more intangible. Love, creation, goals, get MacGuffin, find missing person. I mean, this is my absolute favorite brainstorming tool in terms of writing stories. So I believe they're out of Norway, but I can't remember. Um, one of the colder countries, I believe, uh, Kent and Rolf Jansen, Narada. So you can look that up. Um, let's see what else we got. Then I don't know if you've ever seen these. They're called Rory Story Cubes. So yeah, you can actually get dice. There's actions. There's the original voyages. I don't know if there's any more or not. So let's say, okay, and each cube has 
a symbol on it. So let's say you just want to take three and make a story. Okay. Okay, so we got a raven or a crow, mountains, and this looks to be a shield. Okay, so maybe there's a knight who needs to hunt for a treasure or a dragon and the crow is talking and he'll give him some advice and maybe he's kind of like a mentor. Let's do another one. Sorry for the phone <laughs> shaking. Oh, we got mountains again. Oh, it looks like mountains somewhere, maybe in India and a telescope. So maybe we've got an explorer that wants to go to Tibet or someplace in India, but he has to cross mountains. What will happen? So see, this is just, vo this is just the voyages. Whoops. Oh, geez. I keep doing the same things. Oh, sorry for the phone roll. Uh, it's shaking. We got a tent. We have, oh, geez. I'm not sure what that is. He looks mad. This looks like maybe a giant or perhaps a parent and child in a circus tent of some sort. So see, and that is, like I said, that's just the voyages. Then there's the actions one. And you can always just use one if you wanted. There's actions and then there's the original. So actions would be, let's do two. Okay, somebody jumping and trying to catch a butterfly. Maybe somebody was trying to catch a butterfly and they jumped off a ledge. <laughs> what happens? So, you know, or you could draw, actually draw that, you know, or draw someone catching a butterfly. So see, this can be used not just for stories, but also for visual artists. Now, there's a set of decks by John and Caitlin Matthews. If you're into tarot, you know Caitlin Matthews and John too. They have created quite a few tarot decks and their authors as well and so there's a mad professor's workshop deck there's tales from the haunted house christmas tales the magical toy box so these are very large cards so as you can see i'm very big on brainstorming so if you need someone to help you brainstorm you know feel free to hire me <laughs> janaboyercoaching.com but so this is the haunted house one and it'll explain to you how you can use the cards, but a scissor man, what the heck is a scissor man? Reminds me of, um, Edward Scissorhands, but you know, let's say, you know, you need an idea for a story or a drawing. Boom. Bloody axe. Okay. Let's not do that. Uh, <laughs> a quaking quagmire. Okay. Write a story about somebody driving and they go off the side of the road and they get stuck in a swamp. What happens? Um, same way with drawing. Draw a car going to a swamp. Draw a swamp. Try to, you know, imitate this image. I love that scissors, man. <laughs> it's so weird. The silver bullet. The endless fog. Runaway eyeballs. Oh my god, that's fantastic. This makes me want to read a story. Okay, so see, and this is just one deck. So there are tools out there so you don't have to face the blank page by yourself. I mean, you can always make your own, like I said, or you can buy something. There's something that I fund to help fund. I think it was Kickstarter. Now I don't find this as helpful, but it's very abstract. Like see Van Gogh. I think it's like for designers, but you can also use it if you're an artist. So let's say, boom, clay. Wow. If you have any air dry clay at home, pick it up and start playing with it. Maybe make some jewelry beads out of it. Or draw someone who's making something out of clay. Or write a story about somebody who makes something out of clay. Maybe God making Adam out of, you know, the red dust. Or perhaps the mythology about the golem. You should look that up. That's pretty fascinating. G-O-L-E-M. Thick lines. Okay, so let's say you're doing an art journal. Okay. Or, you know, glue book or whatever. Start making thick lines. Basic shapes. Solid colors. Numbers. If you got a stamp, use a stamp with numbers. Food. Light. Lines. Audio. See what I'm saying? It's basically just kind of what inspires you most and what might help. This one I also helped fund, I think, on Kickstarter. This seems to be, I don't know, more for fantasy artists. It's called a reckless deck, creating without caution. And I got quite a few expansion packs. Um, 
I haven't felt this, found this very helpful, but again, I think this is mostly for like fantasy artists or RPG game makers and things like that, but it is well thought out and, um, they have different things like elf, Medusa hair, greaves and bracers, whatever the hell that is. See, there's stuff like about weapons and other things I don't even know of. Oops. Rubber band broke. Scroll. So these don't have a lot of imagery on them, but they have words, you know, about it, like a playing card, an elf, potion, queen of hearts, big Cheshire smile, cyborg, cyborg or robot uh, parts, spikes. So as you can see, there are tons and tons of brainstorming tools out there. Now, Another one you can use is a tarot deck, and I've said this before, and if you follow my work, you know that um, my tarot books actually include writing prompts because I'm big on brainstorming, whether it's writing prompts for journals to understand tarot better, yourself better, or just for writing, but you can use them also to write stories, you know, pick a card to represent a protagonist, antagonist, the object the goal, you know, the obstacle. You can use them for draw drawing. This is called the all type tarot. It's pretty interesting because it actually has meanings on the cards. And I got this from the Game Crafter. So it's really neat. So for example, this is Empress. And in the shape of the Rider Waite Empress, it has words like renewal, motherhood, growth, creation, sexuality, fortune, woman, nature, life, birth, joy. You got tons of words just there. Hanged man. Two of cups. Three of cups. Seven of pentacles. Profit, reevaluation, re return, reward, flexibility, investment, nurturing the dream. Three of wands. Words. Two of Swords. See, and they're all in different ways. See, isn't that gorgeous how the type is all different? Three of Swords. Absence, confusion, separation, sorrow, error. Five of Swords. A problem has been detected. Enemy detected. Limitations lost. Nine of Swords. I mean, it's just so cool, right? And that's just one tarot deck. Then there's some, something like Carolyn Mace's archetype deck. So if you're a writer, a fiction writer, you probably know all about archetypes, especially if you're into Jungian psychology. So you got Don Juan, engineer, the dilettante, the pioneer, the advocate, the priest, the martyr, Midas miser, the saboteur, the addict, the nature child, the rescuer, the virgin, the messiah, the goddess, the god, the servant, visionary, exorcist, see, the fool, lots and lots and lots of ways that you can face the blank page confidently. And remember, the most important thing is to start. So if you want to be more creative or you want to write a story or you want to start that beautiful art journal or junk journal bit, you're comparing yourself to others. Don't. Comparison is a monster. So just do it. You know, you can't be perfect or adept at the beginning anyway. Everybody starts somewhere and you have to practice if you want to get good. But even if you don't want to get good, even if you want to just express yourself or be more creative, then just begin. Just begin. You know, if you bought the pretty papers, use the pretty papers. If you bought the good stickers, use the good stickers. If you got the good markers and watercolors, use them. Don't wait. You know, it's just like that phrase, if you got the good china, use them. You know, don't keep them on the shelf gathering dust. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. I mean, honest to God, any of us could get hit by a car or whatever and die. And all these goodies will never have been used if we just leave them. And if you don't have any fancy art supplies, you don't need them. You just get a piece of copy paper, or you can use the back of bills that have been sent to you, old envelopes, grab a pencil, markers, pens, and doodle. 
I mean, it's, it's that simple. You can start writing a story on post-it. You can start writing a poem on the back of your shopping list. Just begin. That's the important thing. If you long to be creative and you long to put words out there or images or get color down or see if you can junk journal or put a spread together or even make jewelry or what have you, just begin. Just begin. But that's all. Just start little by little. You know, they say a journey of, you know, 100 miles begins with one step. So I just want to encourage you and let you know that you do not have to face the blank page alone. There are tools out there. You can make your own. I just cut up some index cards and I made my mock um, art journaling deck that's available at shadeboyer.etsy.com. But you can make your own. You could do it with just subjects, styles, materials, colors. Have friends, your family, or your kids write down random words. Cut them. And there's just copy paper, written in pen. And then, boom, pick something. And you can journal about it. Um, journal your thoughts, write a poem, story, whatever you want. And it's a good thing to do with kids as well, you know, to stretch their creativity. You don't need any fancy tools or kits or just spend money. You could just write a couple words, you know. You could even take a magazine and cut out words and try to make a poem, like magnetic poetry. That's another thing I've done um, a video on. You can look for the magnetic poetry um, video. So just wanted to encourage you. I've been seeing this a lot. I know I face it sometimes. I want to do abstract art and I just, I don't know what's wrong with me. I mean, so it's something I do well too. So I just need to go do it. I think I'll go just get the brayer, get some acrylic paints and put some stuff down and make some pretty um, abstract art just for my own sake. And another thing is you might want to keep things pretty handy. Um, so if you do some ha have some art supplies you want to use, just put them in a little cart or a box or something so you could just pull them off the shelf and boom, do it. You know, you can do a little bit while you're making your coffee, while you're eating your breakfast, or better yet, schedule some time for yourself. You're just as important as anything else in your life, so schedule time for yourself, even if it's just 15 minutes. But it's important if you want to be creative that you schedule time and prioritize yourself because if you don't do it, who will, right? And if you really need some extra help, feel free to visit JanetBoyerCoaching.com or reach out to me through um, Facebook. You, you, you should be able to find me at Facebook.com forward slash Janet Boyer or through Janet Boyer Designs. And, you know, we could do a free consult even via uh, Facebook Messenger. I'd love to help. So take care and do something tonight. If you, if you really feel like you want to be creative, do something, okay? And then share in the comment section what you've done. And if any of these inspired you or what your favorite brainstorming tools are as well. And you can always go online. Just Google um, writing prompts. You will get tons of free prompts. Um, there are some websites that actually generate prompts. Go to readsy.com. There are thousands on there. And also, if you write a story you like, according to their prompt of the week, they just posted five new prompts this Friday. Every Friday they do it. It's monsters. So if you're in a Halloween um, mood, you might want to look for just Google Readsy, R-E-E-D-S-Y, Readsy prompts. You'll see them. Write yourself a story. If you want to submit it for free, you can for people to read, or you can actually spend $5 and submit it for the contest. It's up to you, but there's always, always options out there to get you going and face that blank page and get something down there. So I hope this encouraged you. I hope you have a creative weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.